welcome to episode nine from the balcony. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe, being healthy. Let's get into today's video. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. Slide fill, transparencies, if you must, color reversal film. Is this still relevant? Is this still a good choice for today's photographers? Well, that's today's film talk topic. With all this extra time on my hands, I've been going back to my landscape and nature film photography archive and just scanning in some some of the images just kind of revisiting them revisiting them and it occurred to me that all my images are on slide film or on transparencies and it got me thinking is is transparencies even something that photographers should be even using now I'm, what are the benefits what what are you really getting when you're shooting slide film like most photographers back in the days before digital. I started probably with print film or negative film. And it was most likely 35 millimeter. And it wasn't too long after I, I got into nature photography that I went to transparencies. And to start out, I, I started with Kodachrome, Kodak, Kodak Kodachrome. And I, I didn't shoot a whole lot of that. I discovered Fuji Velvia, and I just kind of fell in love with it. Really liked the punchiness of it. I believe it was a 50 ASA speed film. And once I start shooting Fuji, I never look back. It was always Fuji. I didn't. I didn't even do any uh, photography with Ektachrome. It was. It was all Fuji Velvia or Provia, as Provia came along later. I was all in on Fuji at that time. Then at some point. I wanted better image quality, so I moved up to 4x5 sheet film. But because it was so expensive, I was still shooting 35mm. I used it to uh, back up my images. I, I would take a, a shot with the 4x5, and then I would back it up with 35mm. Um, and then I also used the 35mm to bracket my shots, so if my exposure was a little off, at least I would get it with the 35 millimeter. If you've never shot slide film, you gotta know right out of the gate, it is very unforgiving for exposure errors. <laughs> There's very low tolerance for making mistakes with your exposure with slide film. It's just harder to shoot. It has less dynamic range, very low tolerance for exposure mistakes. But when you get it right, it's something to behold. So why was I using transparency film? First reason was publishing. Back then, all submissions were, were done with slide film, 
transparencies. They drop that on the light table. They could quickly look through the images and see if it's something they wanted to use, publish, use for stories. Pretty much all magazine work was do being done with uh, transparencies and calendars and pretty much anything printed back then was those, if you were going to do submissions to them, you would be sending your, your, a sheet of slides or a box of transparencies. The second reason was the punchy colors. Even back then, we were wanting our images to be fairly saturated. And boy, did Velvet deliver on that, <laughs> on that regard. I uh, actually prefer, I think, Provia now, a little less, a little less saturated. When uh, Velvia came out, it, it, uh, we really enjoyed how it uh, depicted a lot of the nature scenes, a lot of the landscapes. I also really liked the fine grain. I was shooting ASA 50 speed films, extremely fine grain, and I always felt like it was a little finer grain than the negative film. Um, now I, it, I can't like prove that. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I always felt like the images were finer, finer grain when I was shooting slides and and then when I went up to my uh, transparencies in 4x5, there was no grain there. It was just super smooth. Taking a, a transparency and putting it on a light table and viewing it through a loop or just viewing it on a light table was really something special. And I also liked the, to, it was easier to edit my images. I could take the, take the shot, Look at look at the image on the light table, and I knew if it turned out or not. I knew, you know, with a negative, it's hard to tell exactly what you had unless you had prints. But with a loop, you could you could look at your uh, your slides and see if they're sharp enough for publication. So I really like the, the ability to to put them on the light table. It's really not something I actually need now, but <laughs> but back then that was important. That was before we were. Uh, scanning images, and then eventually we were scanning the the slides. And I also liked how the images scanned. I think uh, I think it's easier to still scan a transparency than a negative, except the dynamic range is, is so narrow that you know it, if you're not aware of that, then there there could be some problems. But uh, if it's a well exposed uh, transparency, uh, it will it'll scan very well plus you've got the positive there on the light table you can see what it's supposed to look like now although I, I used that that film and got used to the difficulties there were a number of difficulties so in a nutshell some of the negatives of transparency film would be poor exposure latitude you really need to be within a stop of the, the correct exposure Poor dynamic range, I mean, very narrow dynamic range, four to five stops. It's not the best in, in certain lighting. The use of filters could be very useful in, with using a slide film. And it's expensive. Uh, a roll of Velvia, Provia, Cabrera, something 15, 16, 17 dollars for a roll. With processing, you're looking at over 20 dollars just, just for one roll of film. You can't do a lot of photography on, on that kind of, I, I can't do a lot of photography at those prices. Four by five, forget about it. It's like four or five dollars for a sheet every time you click it. And then you're looking at another almost five dollars probably to process it. So eight to ten dollars per click for transparency film. That's just, um, I, I, my pockets aren't deep enough for that. So those, those are some pretty pretty steep negatives there. <laughs> Those are some pretty well-defined negatives. Are there enough positives to outweigh the negatives? That's, that's the question I've been asking myself. That's probably why I haven't shot slides or transparencies in many years. It just, I just don't need it in my, in my workflow anymore. I still like the look though. I still enjoy looking at, the, uh, at my slides. It's, and it, I have to I have to admit it, it. I'm tempted at times to pick up another role, but I just can't afford it, and I don't have a purpose for it anymore. If I'm going to shoot color film in the future, 
It most likely be Ektar, something like that. I, f I found that to be pretty fine grain. It does pretty well, and I'm learning to uh, to scan it. Well, I'm hoping to, to get off this balcony. They're, they're starting to loosen things up a little bit around in my area, so I'm hoping to get out back out with my camera here in the near future. So there shouldn't be a whole lot more of these from the balcony episodes to come. Even if I just have to go out in some little field around town, I gotta get out with my cameras. It's okay to talk photography, but I really wanna get out and make some images. And I really like to take you along. So how about you? Are you still using slide film? Transparencies? And do you find it still a viable choice for photographers? Is there something that it gives you that uh, you just can't get in other film? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear how you're using it. Well, I'm gonna end today's video right here. Until the next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. Let me show you my little cactus farm. All those came from this one cactus plant. I've had it many years. That's, this is a fraction of the pups that I've taken from this uh, cactus. I've given many, many away. This, this one plant has, uh, has uh, spawned many a pup. <laughs> now, uh, now you know I'm losing my mind when I uh, I start farming cactus. <laughs>